Hey there folks, Rel here, and welcome to another episode of YouTube Proper, which is a series dedicated to helping YouTubers, both beginners and veteran alike, cultivate a successful channel. Now today we're going to be talking about how to achieve decent audio in your videos, which is a problem that most people, including myself, have had at some time or another. The point here should be to balance your in-game sound with your voiceovers so that you're not blowing out anybody's eardrums and you're not being too quiet for anyone to hear. The first thing that we should cover though is your equipment. In short, you don't need expert equipment to pull off quality audio. Use what you have, but upgrade when you can afford it. Here's an example of recording on my iPhone. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Here's another example of recording through Audacity on my headset microphone. Sounds different, but it's still pretty legit. For videos where I'm not doing Let's Play content, including this one, I'm using a blue Snowball, which you can pick up on Amazon for under 50 bucks, and that does sound a little bit pricey, but I also didn't start out using it. I used my basic headset microphone for months and months and months, and then I upgraded when I had the opportunity. You can go even further than that as far as price range, but it's not a necessity. In fact, it's fun for your viewers to watch your channel kind of evolve over time. They like to see that your audio, editing, and video quality are getting better over time, and it's smart to include them in the process. So that's all for equipment, but regardless of what you end up using, you need to be able to remove the noise and clean up your audio quality in a program like Audacity. If you want to download this program, you can do it from audacity.sourceforge.net. It's completely free, and it's one of the easiest programs to understand and use. To remove noise, we want to do a few things. The first is just to listen to our environment and do what we can about reducing anything that might mess up our sound. So if your refrigerator is running, or if you've got people in the house, then wait till your refrigerator stops running. Wait till the house is empty. That way, you'll have the best possible quality. If that isn't an option, then do your best to work with that noise. My computer, for example, is extremely, extremely loud. It hums, it clicks, it vibrates the desk, and I think it's actually gotten worse lately. But one solution would be to move my desktop microphone somewhere else, where it's not going to be touching the desk, which means that I also won't be picking up vibrations, and then I would also turn the microphone away from the noises so that it doesn't pick them up as easily. Unfortunately, I can't personally do that because of limitations on my space. So instead, I mitigate the vibrations by using a cardboard box or a stack of magazines, and I just use what I got. If you're paying some attention to this extremely depressing picture of my setup, you'll also see that I have a sock over my microphone. This is a makeshift pop filter. When you breathe into microphones, especially if you're using words that start with the letter P, your audio will spike and it'll be painful to hear. Sometimes you can edit that out, sometimes you can't, so the best solution is just to avoid it altogether. The sock helps keep air from thumping my microphone and causing that popping sound, but I also speak at an angle from my microphone and not directly into it. That way I'm not breathing into the microphone and I have less distortion. So those are the considerations you make when setting up your recording environment, but the next actually comes from adjusting your audio. When you start recording with Audacity, you want 10 seconds worth of dead air where you're not speaking. Then after that, you start recording your script or doing your commentary. You can see an example clip in the background to see sort of what things should look like for you. And when all is said and done, you stop recording and you make some quick edits that will immediately improve your overall quality. Before doing anything else to the audio, we're going to scrub through it, which means to just look through it. And we're going to highlight and delete anything that pops as in any sound that seems like it goes off the charts. So if you breathe into the microphone or if you bumped your desk, you'll see a huge spike, which should seem out of line from everything else that you've recorded. As long as it wasn't an important part of your sentence, you want to remove this, and that'll actually be important for the compression filter that we add later on. The second thing that we want to do is remove our background noise. Now, even if it doesn't look like you have any, you still should do this step. First, you're going to highlight those 10 seconds of dead air that we recorded. Then you go to Effect, Noise Removal, and click Get Noise Profile. Then after that, we're going to select our entire audio track, and you can do this by pressing Control and A. And then you go back to Effect, click on Noise Removal, and then click OK. The drawback of using this technique is that it can make your audio sound a little bit tinny. So from here, I like to add some bass and this is going to make it much, much easier to listen to, provided you don't go overboard. To do that, I select the entire track again using Control and A, and then I go to Effect, I go to Bass and Treble, and then up the bass to the desired amount. 
Lately, for me, it's been about 13 decibels, but it'll depend on what you're using to record and how bassy you actually want things to sound. If you do go overboard, your audience is usually able to tell, and they're going to say something about it, and it's also worth noting that some headsets will make your audio sound a little bit more bassy than others. But outside of that, just sort of use your best judgment. The last thing we want to do is add a dynamic range compression filter, and this is going to make sure that your lows aren't too low and your highs aren't too high. To do this, we're going to go back to Effect, Compressor, and the default settings are fine, but you want to make sure that Compress based on peaks has a check in the box. Then you click OK. Depending on the length of your audio, this might take a little bit to convert, but after a short while, you're going to see your audio look really, really spiky. If you didn't do the very first step, which was to remove the peaks and pops in your recording, your audio probably won't look like this because it'll be basing that compression range on the spike which will make the rest of your audio sound more quiet, and that's not a good thing. But if you've done everything correctly, your audio should sound pretty good, and from here, you should be able to throw it right into the video editing program, and away you go. With that being the case, the last thing that I'd like to briefly cover is how to make sure your audio isn't trumped by your in-game sound. So I'm using Sony Vegas Pro 12 to edit, and if you aren't, there's no worries, just pay attention to the concept as it'll transfer across editing software pretty readily. So when I start a new project, I'm going to drop some in-game footage here, and then I'm going to drop my audio onto another track below that, and then I've also got one more track left at the bottom that I'll also have a use for later. Where I'm speaking, I want to make sure that the in-game audio is not trumping my vocals. So to do that, I just lower the track volume for the background footage using the slider on the left-hand side. My standard is negative 30 decibels, but I make adjustments depending on the footage. For my vocals, they should be pretty good to go if I recorded and compressed the audio correctly, but if it's too quiet, I can always adjust that by moving up the slider a little bit. What I want to watch out for is moving the slider up too much and then causing the audio to crackle. You'll see when the audio is going to crackle because the numbers here will turn red, and red is bad. I'm no sound expert as you can probably tell, but that's the general gist of it. The last thing that I'll want to do is increase the in-game audio at times where there's a long pause and I'm not talking. And that's what I'm saving the third audio track for. It still has negative decibels just to balance it out with how loud my voice is, but it's louder than the negative 30 decibels that we were using when I am talking. To drop audio down into this track, I'm just going to slice it out by pressing S where I want the breaks to happen, and then I move the audio portion straight down. Nice and easy, but that'll actually depend on your video editing software. And that's it. That's basically everything that I can think of. This is more of a crash course in audio adjustment. So if this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you have any questions or more advice for new YouTubers with audio issues, feel free to post that in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.